you need your picture retaken. He said, Frank, I've lost 25 pounds and I want my picture retaken because I look better now than I did then. <laughs> Woohoo! Well, you're not going to get that to happen unless you come over and ask him. Are you with me? You can be in the presence of Jesus. You can come to church and you can feel his presence, but if you never ask anything, you never have any relationship with him, you're not going to have any power released in your life. So you can actually come to church and starve to death for the spiritual nourishment that you needed. You come to church and say, well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get anything today. Did you ask? That'd be like going to a grocery store. You, you go to a grocery store and you walk in there, you know you need food, but you just go in there and sit down over the corner. I'm the kind of guy that goes into a grocery store or goes into a store, and I, I, don't, I, I don't want to push a basket. But within about 15 minutes, I'm looking for somebody that left a basket around because i got too much stuff in my hands. You may be smart enough that you've got the basket. You're standing in the grocery store, you've got the basket, but unless you go get some stuff off the aisles and put them in the basket and then go to the front and check out, you're not receiving anything from that store. You can come into the church and you can have the presence of God here and the praise and worship can be great and the fellowship can be great and you can shake a few hands, but unless you start to ask by the Spirit and receive from the Spirit into your life, you're not going to get anything. So people can come to church and leave and, and spiritually die because they never understand the principle of asking and receiving. He said, if you want the Holy Spirit in your life, you've got to ask. You can't just come to church and something's going to jump on you. I wish it was like that. I wish I had like a, you know, like my microphone was like the, the you know, what do you call those things uh, with the, that has the holy water in it, you know, and just, I could just sprinkle y'all and boom, ah, you got it. Drop hit you and you got it, man. Just run out of church. Make my job easy. All I do is sling water. Be fun. We're going to have a revival. Just come up here and water hose. Right? But you've got to ask. You've got to receive. So the very first thing we saw on these steps of walking with the Holy Spirit and walking on the King's Road is you've got to ask. All right, the second thing we saw is that in Luke 24, 49, it said you shall be endued with power from on high. There's an endowment, a, 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 a vesting that comes upon you when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It's like this garment, this vest I have on this morning. I put it on and when I, you know, I put it on, it fell around to me and fell upon my shoulders. He says you're going to be endued, okay? And then we went on to Acts 1 and 8. What are you being endued with? Power. The word in the Greek is deutimus. It's a word power. It's the same word we get dynamite and dynamo from. It's a power that that sustains you, a power that gives you the ability to overcome temptations. It's a power that gives you wisdom to know what to do into the future. You think the Holy Spirit's not important? You think that we, we can just get along with, well, I have Jesus, but I don't want to talk about the Holy Spirit. I'll take the Father and I'll take Jesus, but I don't know about the Holy Ghost. Where did you get a choice to cut something off? You know, where, where, who, who gave you the authority to do that? It's a package deal. God knows what he's talking about. So he says, he says, you're going to receive power when the, when the, when the spirit of God comes upon you. That due that power comes in you to give you the power to live. And that's where I'm telling you we are today. Without the due power in your life, man, we're going to get deceived. The Bible says that even the very elect, the very elect, could be deceived in the last days. And I'm telling you, we're in the last days. I don't know how far in the last days you are. I can't tell you that. But I'm telling you, we're in the last days. There's too many signs that says we're in the last days. Hello? Y'all still out there? You've got to have power. You've got to have power for everything that you do. Power to live in your marriage. Power to walk in victory. I, I, you know, as I look around here, I see so many of you that you got hold of this power at one time in your life, in a situation you're in, in a, in, a, in a trauma or a hurtful situation or a bad situation or a sickness or something that came upon you and you grabbed hold of it and it changed your life and then here you are today because of that event. But I'm telling you, we've got to keep going on. Hello? It's not a one-time event. So then, then we talked about, in Acts chapter 10, 
Uh, then we went on to Acts chapter 10 and we talked about how it says that the Holy Spirit fell on them. It equipped them. Okay. It, it came upon them and pressed upon them. All right. And so that brings us today to Acts chapter 19. And I want to start out here in verse 1 and read it to you. It says, It happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, and Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. And now he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Now, that sounds like an odd thing to ask somebody. He says he found, look, he says, he found some disciples. In other words, he, there was something that these men were doing that gave them some, some understanding of, of Christianity or God at that moment. I couldn't really say Christianity because they weren't Christians yet. Let's read on. And they said, we've not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, until then, what were you baptized? So they said, unto John's baptism. And Paul said, John indeed baptized you the baptism of repentance, saving... Uh, under the people that they should believe in him, that would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Now when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. So what happened is, in this instance was, is someone had gone to Jerusalem and heard John the Baptist preaching, that people should repent and turn to God. So he came back, whoever this preacher was, and preached it in this regions of Ephesus. And these people heard it and said, well, we want to we serve God. We want to do what's right. So those people then repented and turned to God. But they didn't. They, in the meantime, Jesus had already gone to the cross, already been risen from the dead, and they missed that. You've got to understand, they had no internet. They had no television. They had no newspaper. They had no, you know, if things happened and it took time for it to travel through. So all of that had taken place, and Paul's the first one coming back to the region to be preaching something. And so he finds these guys, but he says, well, who did you, well, uh, when you, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? That was the first thing he asked them. That just is kind of strange to me. If you found somebody that was a believer today, you'd probably ask him, oh, what church do you go to? Isn't that right? Oh, you're a believer? Hey, I've been to see the fish in your car. What church do you go to? In that day, you walked up and said, Oh, you're a believer? Hey, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? In other words, see, the, the day of Pentecost had come. See, there could have been somebody, just think of it this way. In those days, there could have been someone who was at the crucifixion, saw Jesus hang on the cross, saw him die, and thought that was the end and left. You know, it's like the football game or the whatever you'd be watching, the tennis match or the golf game or or whatever, when, you know, you turned off the TV because you're mad your team wasn't winning. And then you turned on the next morning and found out they won in the last second. You didn't watch it. Right? And so there could have been somebody that was there and saw Jesus crucified. I said, well, I thought he was the Messiah and left. Didn't even know. Was discouraged living out in the, in, the, in the hillside. Discouraged. And then somebody said, no, what are you talking about? Man, he rose from the dead. What? Nobody told me. Either. No, he rose from the dead. He was the son of God. He really was it. Oh, man, if I'd have stayed in Jerusalem, I'd have seen it. Oh, but then after that, we went to church on Pentecost Sunday and the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit fell on us. And we all were, were baptized in the Holy Spirit, church speaking in tongues. What? I missed that too. Yeah, you just missed the two major events on earth. Since the creation. Because you got mad after Jesus crucified and left. You see how it could have happened? That's what happened to these guys. They believed into John. And, his, and repented. They had a heart towards God. But he said, no, 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 there's more. There's more. Now, what's interesting about this is when he asked them, did you receive the word in the Greek is lambano. And the lambano means it, it doesn't mean receive it like like uh, you just got it. OK, I have I have keys here. OK, in my pocket. And so I could give you my keys. And. 
In a technical sense, you received my keys. But the word lambano means more than that. It means not only did you receive the keys, you know where the key fits and you know how to open the door. Hello? It's more than just receive like you got it. Because I can give you the keys right here and you don't, you're not going to know what to go to. Oh, now let me just use a little example here, okay? Here, Dwayne Kitts, he's right here, okay? Now, look on those keys there and tell me if there's any key on there you recognize and what it might go to. Woo! Pitch it back up here. I didn't catch it. In the bright lights. Oh, man, that's my Harley key. That goes to my Harley. Whoo! Boy. But you know what? My Harley right now is sitting behind another locked door. You ain't going to get my Harley. 